few notifications of things happening um, as we go. Uh, anyway, hey, thanks. Thanks for coming by. Uh, my name's Dom, and I also have like a sick cat, and so I'm going to be kind of bouncing around. So um, yeah, stick, stick with me um, as best you can. And uh, uh, I'll probably be popping in and out, but um, uh, like I'm gonna tell this cat right here to stop drinking the other cat's water. <clears throat> Fun times. Fun times. Okay, so that's working. Uh, let's see if YouTube. YouTube appears to be working. Great. Fan. Fantastic. Okay. Hey. Um, welcome. Uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, once again, my name is Dom Zook. This is Proficiency Check, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I kind of have a, my brain is like all over the place. So many cool things are happening this week. Uh, not to mention the aforementioned sick cat, who I am trying to watch over as best as possible. Um, but uh, welcome. Let, let's let's just get right to it, shall we? Um, uh, and by the way, we are streaming on uh, Twitch and YouTube. So if Twitch is giving you any troubles, by all means, go over to YouTube. Uh, just stay logged into Twitch so that you can keep earning XP, uh, so that you can spend that on the Barky session uh, later this week. Um, anyway, uh, let's see here. Um, oh, okay, so first off, thanks to everyone who uh, uh, was able to show up for uh, the stream that I played in on uh, uh, with Encounter Roleplay this weekend. Uh, I had a ton of fun. Uh, they had another 24-hour stream. They are monsters. They do 24-hour streams every month, which is insane <laughs> and they're they're crazy for doing it but they are very fun to watch and i i had a great deal of fun um playing in that game uh so uh yeah it's it should be coming up on their youtube uh vods sometime soon uh they are twitch.tv slash encounter roleplay uh and i think that's the same thing on youtube um but yeah definitely check them out uh and uh, i was on the summit of edinburgh uh, stream. So when that shows up, go ahead and check it out. Um, hey guys. Uh, hey Kyle. Um, uh, today's subject is uh, uh, me learning how to be a GM. So uh, if you know how to be a GM, please offer any tips, advice, or whatever. Um, if you haven't been a GM before, learn along with me. Um, oh, it's probably quiet because I've got the mic not in front of me. Here, that should help. That should help considerably. Um, okay, anyway, so Encounter Roleplay. Check them out, please. Um, always good to hit a cat with a pencil. Um, now she is. She loves the pencil now. Um, anyway. Okay, moving on. Ivan, our old friend Ivan Van Norman has a Kickstarter going on right now, the ABCs of RPGs. Uh, go check it out. Uh, I don't have the link handy, but you should be able to look that up pretty dang easily. ABCs of RPGs. It's through Hunter Books. Um, good friends of ours. Uh, and uh, yeah, Ivan's putting that on right now, and I think they're doing quite well. So uh, if you have the notion to donate to another Kickstarter, um, Check it out. It's really cool. It's a really cool project. Um, RPGs for kids uh, and and teaching those concepts to the little ones, I think, is a great, uh, great cause. So um, check it out. It's really cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, our old friend Castles and Chemo has just started a podcast. Um, oh, thanks for posting that, uh, GTS. Uh, thanks for posting it to both YouTube and Twitch. I appreciate it. Um, uh yeah the emic this is a great mic i love this mic um anyway uh 
Um, let's see, moving. Oh yeah, Castles and Chemo has a podcast. Um, so uh, if Castles and Chemo has been watching the show for like ever and has been a great friend of ours, um, uh, check it out. Uh, it's very very cool. He he just started it. Um, so there's just one episode out right now, but it's, it's, it's a great, uh, cross section of, uh, when you have something like a terminal illness, um, and, uh, a love of role-playing games, um, things, things like that are, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's heavy, but it's, it's really, really interesting. And it's really, uh, he does it in a really fun way. If you haven't done any castles and chemo stuff or checked any anything out like that before definitely check it out because it's very 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 cool um uh worth your time um uh i there's just uh, there's a couple of uh uh partnerships that i want to talk about but i can't but they're very exciting and so the um i i'm like i'm like here i'm like super super jazzed about these things right now and um yeah really excited i can't tell you what they are (laughs) right now you're just gonna have to uh you're just gonna have to wait and um and see but uh 11 o'clock tomorrow morning tuesday morning uh pacific standard time uh be watching your um be watching your uh your facebook's your your Twitters, um, and, uh, uh, and you will, uh, you will find some, uh, some cool things that we're, that we're doing. And then, uh, the, w- there's two, there's two very cool partnerships. You'll learn about the first one tomorrow. And then the, uh, the second one on Wednesday at 11, uh, in the morning, uh, you will find out about, um, and then following up on that, uh, this Wednesday at 8 PM, We have a very special stream that's in conjunction with those two partnerships. Um, And uh, Mason, who's in the Twitch chat right now, GM Mace, uh, is taking part in that. Ivan is GMing. Um, uh, Tyler uh, will be playing. Amy Vorpal, Tracy King, uh, and Ben Dunn will all be playing. Um, And it's going to be lots of fun. And I I think you should check it out. There's going to be prizes. And... um, like really cool prizes so um tune in wednesday at eight o'clock i wish i could tell you more but i can't i signed i signed a deal can't talk about it um moving on season finale of barky's brigade is this friday 8 30 p.m uh here on twitch and on youtube youtube's over there for some reason i don't know i guess technically the youtube space where they film a bunch of stuff is down that way so uh, that's clearly what I was pointing at. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, check that out. Season finale, season two. Uh, season three starts back up again in March. We take no break. We go straight through. Um, but uh, definitely check it out. But as a little treat for you guys who are here, you're not going to see this again. Um, but uh, as a little treat... I want to show you a couple of special things that we have lined up. Well, I'm going to show you one thing because the other one is like way, way cool. So you're going to have to tune in on Friday to see it. But uh, check this out. Let's see if it resolves. Oh, it's not going to it's not going to autofocus. Okay, let's try this one more time. Uh, Watch this. All right. All right. Now, there we go. Check that out. That is uh, Tracy's character. That is Dale Clawthorn. Uh, done by the amazing, um, amazing Iron Tusk. Iron Tusk miniature painting. Um, he he put that together, uh, and uh, in in record time, and it's positively brilliant. Uh, it looks gorgeous um we'll show a little bit more of of uh of that character but there's also another mini um a special mini that i will not reveal quite yet uh friday uh we'll show it uh because it's i want i want it to be a surprise (laughs) 
because it's 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 pretty awesome. Um, I know I'm teasing like a ton of stuff right now, uh, and I, I hate that I have to do that. I really wish that I could um, uh, tell you guys what's going on. I, I've had to bite my tongue for for an extremely long time uh, on on some of these, and I'm not good at that. Um, but uh, yeah, you're. I think I think they're really cool. Um, and then uh, uh, so tomorrow. Uh, because we have a stream on Wednesday, uh, Rhodes Legacy is uh, going to get a little bit janky, uh, and Tyler and I are going to try to live stream us setting up for a typical RPG session in his garage. So we're going to try to do that. I can't guarantee it's going to be up, uh, but yeah, um, take take a gander. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let people know, uh, when we figure out if we can do it or not. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's a little, a little bit of a, um, catch 22 to, uh, to stream something when you have to set up the stream first. So yeah, we'll see what we can do. But, um, so that's tomorrow. And then, uh, also tomorrow, the first part of episode 11 of Barky's. Uh, which is the last episode we filmed, um, goes up on YouTube. So uh, you can catch up before Friday's episode. Um, yeah. So that catches you up. Wow. I did that in 10 minutes. That's pretty damn good. Um, all right. So uh, uh, Kyle had a little little note here. Yes. Uh, so the, the topic of the evening is uh, me learning to be a GM. Um, uh, I am, um, uh, Mason won't tell you, but, uh, I've, uh, I've cut off his legs and he is, uh, he is not going to be making it, you know, he could crawl, but, um, I don't know. We'll see. Right, Mace? Um, uh, no, seriously, I, I've, I've wanted to get back into GMing the last time, uh, the last time that I GMed, well, Okay, I did GM once for Mason. Uh, I, I I talked about it last week, but we had this massive um, Age of Rebellion, Edge of the Empire uh, um, session at Strategicon a couple years ago that uh, Mason orchestrated, and um, uh, oh, I'm reading I'm reading the chat. Yeah. Um, uh, GTS, whichever chat you want to be in, I see both of them. So, whichever one makes you feel feel the best, uh, and everyone on on YouTube can see the chat because it shows up uh, on the side there on my video. So, everyone sees it. Um, but uh, yeah, so we did that. But you know, that was like, I don't know, flying by the seat of my pants, uh, craziness. Um, and, and I was one of five GMs and, and it was, it was insane. It was a lot of fun. Um, but it was insane. Um, and then, uh, I think Mason will agree with me. <laughs> we were, we worked hard on that one. He, he especially. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think everyone had a blast on it though. Um, but, uh, the only time before then that I've GM that I've ever GM'd was for a, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other strangeness campaign um and uh uh or yeah it was a campaign with my friend and i like i i brutally killed him uh he fell into a trap and literally he was not figuring a way out of the trap and i killed him and uh i i i i, I could not feel uh uh i i felt responsible even though that's really just how the that's how the session worked um I, but i i just felt terrible uh and so i i <laughs> i resigned myself i exiled myself away from gming and uh um i i never got back into it so um now i uh i i'm i'm you know i've been getting back into to role playing games over the last few years 
and uh, clearly, uh, as you can see around you, um, and, uh, you know, I wanted to sort of reach back into my roots of telling stories and stuff and seeing if I could uh, be uh, do GMing again. Um, and so uh, I've been getting old modules, old uh, first and second ed D&D modules uh, and and reading through them. And they're they're classic. They're cheesy, uh, but they're great. They're what I grew up on. Uh, if you watch the first episode of Proficiency Check, uh, which is available on Twitch, um, not yet on YouTube, but uh, you saw I did some conversion of uh, Horror on the Hill. Um, let me grab that. Horror on the Hill. Great little adventure. We talked about it. You and me. Um and uh, you know it was, it's a it's it's a fun adventure for players levels one through three. So it's a really great sort of like learning adventure. Um, and uh, uh, it's something that I I felt I could kind of sink my teeth into pretty easily. So um, I'm going to start doing that. Uh, Kyle had uh, had the first point, which was just read read the material through, which is an excellent point. That's something that I rarely ever do. Oh, you know, I forgot a couple of extra lives ago. I actually GM'd another session and, uh, it was uh, slave pits of the undercity actually that I converted to fifth edition, um, and ran that. Um, I did just say horror on the hill. Yeah. Didn't work out so well. Um, uh, GTS says rule number one, relax. You're going to screw up your first time. Everyone screws up the first time and the second and the hundredth and the 10,000th. Even guy got screwed up. I, yeah, no, I believe it. Um, and learn from those mistakes. Uh, it's yeah. That, I mean, it, it's true in life, uh, as it is for a GM. Um, if I've learned anything from, uh, the great GMs that I've played with, it is that, um, oh, here, here's, here's the sick cat, by the way. I'm not, I, here, I'll try and angle down. You can see. See? Bella, show everyone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's got a cone because he's had a couple teeth extracted because they were not doing too good for him. And then he's got a little, little chunk out of his butt. Um, so he's got his little cone on. Anyway, um. He's named after Bella Lugosi. Um, uh, anyway, if there's one thing I've learned from the great GMs that I've played with is that um, uh, you you should have a, the the table that you're at. I and I say this all the time when I when I talk to people about gaming groups and stuff and what what makes a good gaming group. <laughs> you yeah, you're not getting up here. Um, and that's the the whole table should be uh involved and well he got he got up here that's good good for him one second oh boy you got it you just got to chill oh look at that yeah okay i know you don't like being held but we're going to do it um yeah he's not liking that all right See you later. <laughs> okay. Anyway, fun, fun distraction. Um, but the whole table should be in unison as to, you know, where you're, where you're going and no one more so should be attuned to that than the GM. Um, you're, you're acting as a referee. You are the ultimate decision maker. Um, uh, and yet, it's a democracy. You can't you can't rule with an iron fist uh, because that's just going to uh, you know alienate people. Um, unless the other the other players want that sort of firm hand, uh, but if that's not you, don't worry about it. Uh, you you just be clear with what you can do. I am I am personally I'm not an an iron fist um, uh, when it comes to these things. I prefer to. Um, have more of a 
more of a storytelling um, sort of uh, uh, feel. So uh, I'll just give you a background as to what I I prefer or what I'm looking to do as a GM, and then we'll we'll build from there. And if you have uh, comments on that, or if you have specifics as to like things that you how you want to become a GM or any, anything like that. Like we can talk about it. This is an open discussion between me and you. So, um, I, uh, I would love to have, uh, a, a story basically go back and forth. Um, I, I'm okay with the rules. Like, you know, I, I, if we get into combat, I can handle most of that, um, most of that stuff. Uh, but I really like the storytelling aspects uh, of it and telling a mutual story. Um, and uh, so that's sort of what I try to aim for is, is, is do that. Now, these, with these things, uh, these modules, they are, um, I don't know, I would say they're, they're, uh, they're a little... Straight. I mean, they were designed to be picked up, and and any any anybody could pick. This is for the basic game too, so it's not even you know advanced rules or anything like that. They're meant to be picked up, and you just start kind of just start reading, and and you read through it once, and you kind of get an idea of where it's going and and what each area has, and then you kind of get the flavor text that gives you that. It gives you all the stats, and then you just go, and um. That's sort of where it uh, where it starts, and I see that Mace is pretending that chat is a Twitter feed. <laughs> I don't know how well hashtags go on t on a uh, on Twitch, but hey, Eric, I'm gonna call you Eric because it's easier than saying <laughs> Tametsu. Um, uh, how's it going? Uh, and hey, BSB, what's up? Thanks for tuning in this weekend. Uh, it was good seeing you. Um. Yeah, so uh, these are pretty straightforward, and so for me, it's a good way to get sort of the get an overarching sense of of a uh, of a setting and a a purpose for the party to go do without having to like, okay, I want them to go do this and do that, and I want them to fight this god and and have this, you know massive thing come in I can ignore all that and just focus on telling the story which is great because I can sort of turn off um, that part of my brain um, so yeah <laughs> um, so yeah I want to uh, uh, I want to use this as just sort of a, a starting point um, and this is going to be the the module that I will eventually run on the channel um, for a select group of players. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Junior Perez, J.R. Perez. Thank you very much. Um, uh, yeah. So anyway, um, so that's where I'm starting. Um, and, uh, we've got, um, I've got the PDF, uh, version. If you remember the, from the first episode, I've got the PDF, um, uh, oh, Kyle asks, what would I primarily DM, D&D, &D, Pathfinder, or other? Um, I will probably, well, obviously I'm going to do D&D &D first, um, just because it's, a lot of us are used to it. Um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, eventually I'll probably be doing some Star Wars, um, and, uh, I would love to do, uh, Savage Worlds and, um, Microscope. Uh, and I'm going to be checking out a couple of other, um, uh, other RPGs. Uh, but yeah, Microscope and, uh, Savage Worlds are two that I, that I enjoy playing, uh, and would love to, uh, we haven't really ever touched them, uh, on the stream. So I'd like to do, uh, some more with those. Um, anyway, this is the, uh, this is the, um, uh, this is the PDF version of, of this guy. And, um, 
it's 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 really really uh, straightforward. Yes, you meet at Guido's uh, fort. Um, now I've I've read this. Uh, it's funny modules, especially older modules, can get a little boring fast if you're reading them. They're not meant to be read. Necess- it's sort of like Shakespeare, um, uh, where Shakespeare is not necessarily meant to be read. It's meant to be performed, uh, and. Um, D and D modules, RPGs in general, are meant to be performed by the GM and the players. Um, it's my that's my opinion anyway. Uh, some of them can be uh, high art uh, when put into written format, but um, I I tend to think that they that they play better um, when you have a little bit of uh, uh, you know performance. Uh, performance aspect to it uh and i don't mean like silly voices and everything like that i just mean uh when it's when it's performed rather than just read uh wrote by rote um that's that's kind of what i'm talking about so i started reading this and i you know i was just like okay you know you start in uh you meet here you go you purchase equipment all this stuff is just really you know, straightforward and everything. And then, uh, then you start getting into the actual adventure once you set the party up and then they start going. And then you have these little sections here that are like, um, you know, this is where you're going and, uh, here's the, uh, the flavor text and, and all that stuff. And that's, it's all, that's all great. But, uh, I, I just, I couldn't, after a while, I couldn't get into it. Um, it's, I mean, it's literally just like, you know, uh, you're, you're just kind of like, I don't know, just reading flavor text, which is just not, not terribly interesting. But, um, having said that, uh, obviously the the these modules and stuff and, and many modules current modules older modules were written for people to pick up and and learn uh and not just learn but but for advanced players and everything uh just sort of have a basis to to move off of and so f- with these um it's really um it it makes it a lot more straightforward than if you were trying to cr- craft something yourself. So if if you've ever been worried, if you haven't wanted to get into uh, DMing uh, or storytelling or whatever you want to call it, um, because you you don't feel like you have the imagination to craft an entire world or something like that, like don't worry about it. Either keep things very very simple, like players are going to rescue an orphan. And that's it. That's what, that's your plan. And then things can just go haywire from there, but that's your, that's your thing. Or you can pick up one of these, uh, or out of the abyss or something like that. Um, and, uh, and have that blueprint basically that you can, you know, uh, build off of. Um, yeah, as GTS says, the plot is usually hidden in the text. Uh, and you find out why, the cult is in this dungeon by finding a letter that's in room M and hidden under the desk, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, that's the thing with these is, is it's tricky because you kind of start skimming through it. It's sort of like, um, Oh, which, which one was that? Uh, I think a feast for crows of the, uh, the song of ice and fire series where I was reading and I got about halfway through and I was just like, this is really boring. I started skipping. Um, <laughs> and then, I got to the end and I was like, okay. And I started talking to a friend. He's like, well, did you read, did you read the section about the one guy who did this one thing? And I was like, what? And I went back and yeah, this is a very short chapter, but it like completely blows your mind when you read it. And of course I skipped it because I was just like, no, this is really boring. So that's, that's more on me than on the writer, but, um, <laughs> had to point it out. Um, anyway, as you can see here, uh, so in the box is your flavor text. That's what you read to the players. Um, everything outside of that box is for you, the the uh, the dungeon master, to um, to basically you know give you give you a 
a 360 idea of what's going on. Um, and so uh, it's it's necessary to read through that um, for these things because your players are going to ask you questions and you know you can you can try and make it up but if you if you make up the wrong thing like you're sending your guys down the wrong path and that's sort of what I did back when I was 10 and I killed my friend in TMNT and other strangeness uh I didn't read ahead and I didn't give him you know I was like I can't tell you how to break out of this trap but I really could have if I actually read the adventure uh, I might rerun that adventure at some point. Um, I, I keep teasing people that we'll play TMNT and Other Strangeness, and um, I would love to, uh, but, yeah, we'll see. Um, anyway, so um, so my thing, and I'm not going to do this on the on stream, obviously, because, my God, would that be boring. Some people do stream that. I am not going to do that. I am not going to read this page for page uh, with you guys on the other end. Uh, we have far more exciting things to do. Um, far more interesting things to do at the very least. Um, so this is a pretty, it's a relatively straightforward adventure. Um, and uh, again, I, I did talk about it a lot on the first episode of um, Proficiency Check, but uh, I, I would love to go into more depth because yeah, this is this is the game that I would love to uh, to tackle and play with a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know if you guys, by the way, are getting a lot of um, problems. Like I said, you can jump over to YouTube, uh, which should help you with any sort of twitch errors. Uh, I, I'm seeing some dropped frames, but I'm not sure how that's showing up. I know that Twitch was under super heavy strain uh, about 20 minutes ago. So, um, yeah, let me know if you're having any trouble uh, trouble with that, although there's really nothing I can do. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah, BSB, you got it. Um, <laughs> I am so glad that a hundred foot cord was the best ten dollars I ever spent. Um, by the way, I I'm I'm going to try something new this week. Uh, um, I am we're going to try a different camera setup. Uh, if we can get it to work, it's going to be awesome. But something so that you can see the dice. Well, actually, let me ask you this question. This is completely off topic, sort of. Uh, would you prefer a always on camera? So you, if you see how, how the screen is set up right now, actually, let me go back to, uh, let me go back to this. Okay. You see how this is set up now. Imagine where it says support us on Patreon. We had a dedicated feed, a dedicated camera there. Would you prefer to have that dedicated on the, excuse me. See, I'm doing the burp juice again. I'm terrible. Anyway, would you prefer to see the uh, dice cam or see a close-up of the um, the map with the minis and everything like that? Which would you prefer? I, I tend to think that the dice cam would be better to have on there all the time. But you tell me. GTS says minis. Um, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, we're basically I'm going to get a better angle on the on the minis uh, for sure. But which which one is is better? Uh, is better. Yeah, the pizza cam would be pretty good. That goes by pretty fast. We should just stick the pizza cam at people's. I would love to get little uh, tiny little pen cameras on on everyone's uh, little uh, section and just like they have on like celebrity poker, so you can see their hands and everything. Um. I would love to do both of them, but the screen real estate just won't allow uh, me to do all of that. So um, it's it's gonna it's got to be one or the other, unfortunately. Because you see uh, over here, over here, uh, this chat is about as small as I can get it and still be legible. Uh, and then down here, I can obviously get rid of the Patreon thing. You guys know about Patreon. 
patreon.com slash saving throw show. It helps us out a lot. It supports us. It allows us to do things like add a camera so that you guys can see dice cams or minis or whatever. Uh, if you don't support us on Patreon, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you for watching. Uh, it's just a dollar a month. Five dollars a month gets you uh, free songs once a month. Uh, it will get you an album when the album comes out later this year. Uh, songs sung. Uh, songs in the key of D and D is the name of the album. Um, and it, they are all written and performed by Miss Amy Vorpal. Uh, and other cool things like a hangout once a month and stuff like that. That's at five dollars or more a month. But anyway, um, I digress. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. So uh, let's see map. I'm seeing map. People like the map. Yeah, and there's, you know, uh, BSB, you have a good point. Uh, different game systems may, uh, the preference, whereas uh, Star Wars is more theater of the mind, there's not so much uh, dealing with the minis. Although I have some really cool ideas for, <laughs> for minis. I love, I love the theatricality of games. Um, I'll get into this probably in a later episode. Um, but like I have, I backed like dungeon or Dwarven Forge like crazy. And so I have like a buttload of the Dwarven Forge stuff. Uh, and, uh, I'll probably, when I do horror on the hill, I'll be setting up, um, I'll be setting that stuff up, uh, which will be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, um, but for yeah, for Star Wars, they their Toys R Us has this um, uh, RC uh, ad at, and it's crazy expensive. And honestly, it's not that great for what it is. But it's the perfect size for minis. It is the perfect height. It's like this, this big. So you got your minis down here and uh, down there, perfect size. And it's like yes, and it moves, it walks turns and it fires its guns it's pretty badass so you could totally have like a hoth on the table i think would be freaking fantastic anyway um uh the um i will be i, I can tell you this the space is very likely changing by the way sun growler uh, and the table is going to get much larger. I can't tell you exactly when, because I don't know when, but uh, I believe before season three starts. So in March, uh, this uh, this the 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 look of the show may uh, change drastically. We'll see. Not my show. My show will still be here, but the uh, Barkies and everything else. Um, Anyway, uh, yes, the Christmas present will be broken out. The Christmas, the now two years old Christmas present will finally be making its debut on the stream. Not this week, but probably in a couple weeks. And I could not be more happy to show you guys. Uh, it is awesome. Anyway. <laughs> yes, we are finally implementing the laser plan with uh, Tyler's Garage, and it will be floating in two weeks' time. So Lowe's apparently had a deal on uh, on repulsor rays. Um, okay, getting back to uh, being a GM. So uh, raise your hand if you uh, are someone who wants to learn how to be a GM. Uh, and it doesn't have to be D&D. It can be anything. Star Wars, Savage Worlds, Fate uh whatever uh pathfinder dungeon world uh anything um let let me know uh in chat if you are wanting to learn how to be a gm and then uh let me know in chat if you are an experienced gm and what systems you play and we will we will go from there um kyle asks when sh can when should we expect to see the next how to play series um uh, yeah, real quick. Um, uh, we the next how to play series will be Shadowrun. Uh, uh, that's just 
part of it. Um, the uh, uh, probably, I would say the fall, if I'm being honest. Um, just we we are going to need to raise some some money to to put that together the way we generally put put things together. The Pathfinder series was was not cheap to put together. Uh, we ran a Kickstarter for that. We'll have to do it again for the Shadowrun series uh, if we're to do it and give it any sort of justice. Um, but we have a lot planned for it, uh, and I think it's going to be really awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I'll be talking about that a lot. I'll be, I'm going to start to give uh, updates. Uh, we'll, we'll start to have like monthly and then weekly and then maybe daily updates as we move forward with the Shadowrun series. But that's the next how-to. And uh, I hope that we will be able to um, uh, expand um, expand the how-tos so we can, we'll do more in-depth things for Pathfinder. Uh, we'll touch... Uh, Amy and I are actually working on a show uh, where we're going to answer how-to questions so that if anyone has specific questions from a specific system, uh, you can send them on in to us, and we are going to start uh, answering those uh, for you guys on a live stream and a podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you, Fakwad, for bringing that up. Um, thank you so much, Kyle. Um, Guido, World of Darkness, that's awesome Very cool I have very limited World of Darkness experience I played Mage once, I played Werewolf once That's that's my The extent um, let, me, let me see here I know GTS is experienced Um Meitsu, yes, sir. Um, good, good, good. Okay. If you are a new GM or you know someone who wants to GM, have them start tuning into proficiency check because we're gonna we're gonna try and go through that stuff uh, and and help people out. So if anything, the community beyond uh, the community that comprises saving throw. Uh, you guys are awesome. You know that. Uh, we love you. And and you guys are really good about helping each other out. And so if, if I can facilitate anything, it will be uh, having new people come in and learning from uh, the other people who already have experience in there. And so I, you know, I would love to bring you guys together. Synergy. Um, yeah. So so please uh, help me out with that. Um, anyway, so horror on the hill, let me get back to, uh, to here. So, um, the thing that, uh, we, we sort of left off on was, uh, reading through the, the entire module. Don't be like me. Don't skip it because it's boring. Uh, if you are running a pre-written module like this, which I highly recommend. Uh, just just take the load off of your brain and and pick one of these. There there there's so many good ones out there, um, and they're relatively cheap to find uh, at um, used bookstores or uh, at conventions and stuff like that. They're they're pretty cheap. Like don't pay more than like thirty dollars for one. They're not they're not not all of them anyway are collector's items. So um, don't don't spend too much money on them. But uh, they're good. They're really good. Um, anyway, if you are running those, read through the entire thing at least once. Uh, drive through RPG, yes, excellent. Uh, uh, if you want to go through drive through RPG, uh, shameless plug. Go to our website savingthrowshow.com. At the top, there is a link to drive through RPG. Click that and order at your heart's content, and um, uh, a portion of uh, the proceeds go towards supporting our show. Um, RD Bram824 currently running a group through Rise of the Rune Lords Adventure Path. Uh, we're on the second module in it. Think I'm doing okay, but I have a hard time embellishing the story further than what's pre written. 
Yes, GTS, you get credit. You 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 laid it up. Um, cat. Cat on the windowsill. Um, uh, that is a healthy cat. I bet I bet she's gonna come crashing down here like any minute now. Anyway. Rise of the Rune Lords. I so I'm not I'm not a hundred percent uh um on Rise of the Rune Lords. I, I it's a Pathfinder. Um I feel like Alton Brown on Iron Chef trying to explain all of the dishes. Um I know I know uh I know generals. <laughs> but I think uh embellishing the story is really where the theatricality comes into it right and uh it's it can be made easier well hi see told you um it can be made easier <laughs> get off of here um if you have uh um if you have a good rapport with your players and you uh, there's some backstory there that you can uh, use to sort of pepper into the actual uh, the actual gameplay. So um, I, as a GM, when I when I run Horror on the Hill, my goal is to have players that are that have a connection, and it's not just you meet at a tavern and you know you, somehow you you end up going out. I like. My, personally, I like when I build characters, I like to have a backstory and I like to have a purpose as to why they're in this certain adventure. Um, and then uh, as a GM, like my goal is to have the players feel like they're not just a random uh, person who just happened to be in this bar and out of the goodness of their heart is going to go do this deed. Um, but they have an actual purpose and the people they're with, uh, have a, have a, um, have a reason to be together. I mean, there's something to be said for a suicide squad of, of players. Uh, that's certainly the, uh, the, um, the conceit with a lot of modules, but, um, <laughs> no, certainly not, certainly nothing wrong with taverns, especially gamers taverns. Um, but, um. Uh, I like I like having having a uh, a relationship set up between the characters. It can be very very light. I mean, it's it's it can be maybe they met on the road the day before or something like that. It doesn't have to be they grew up together or anything like that. But anyway, having those backstories can really help um, uh, establish a storyline for you to draw from uh, that you can use. Rise of the Rune Lords or Horror on the Hill or whatever you're running or your own campaign to um, can influence that storyline so that you can embellish it. So, you know, someone you can get things from the players like what is your players or what is your character's biggest fear? What is their what is the thing that makes them uh, happy? You know, what is their favorite song? What it, things things like that that can help kind of influence how you deal with those players and how they uh, are reflected in the campaign itself. So, um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, I, yeah, I think, is it weird? I don't know. I, I is it weird? He says people uh, on Twitch are not able to see this, although you should be able to. Um, uh, is it weird uh, if you put the emphasis on their background if they're six months deep into the campaign and haven't touched much uh, on it before? Um, you know, I think it's uh, it's it's up obviously it's up to your group and the dynamic of the group. Um, if it's something that you feel you can um, to go you, that you feel everyone is kind of wanting to go into, then absolutely you can do whatever you want. Uh, if you feel some resistance to going into backgrounds and the relationships and stuff like that, then, you know, maybe not. But six months of 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 session time does not necessarily translate to six months of game time. Um, so uh, the players or the characters may have only been together for six weeks um, or something like that. So it may not necessarily translate on a one to one level. Um 
All right. Good night, Halloween man. 1969. Great year. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I obviously it depends on, on the, uh, the, the party that you're playing with, but I, I think that it's, it's, it's not too crazy to, uh, to bring it up late in the game. Um, but yeah, uh, as BSB says, just sprink, sprinkle it in just very, very lightly. Just remind them. Oh yeah. Do you remember that? Uh, Star Wars does this really well with their obligation system. Um, and, and I think that you can play with it with, uh, you know, backgrounds in, in 5e and stuff like that, where you, uh, kind of remind players like, Hey, by the way, remember you were an orphan. And so this, you know, this, this is a foster parent or something like, like you remember this from your, from one of your, the houses that you had to stay in or something like that. And, and give people just a little bit of a, of a push to investigate that. Um, and you can embellish it as much as you want. Um, I think it's always good if you can to sort of prep that um, and, uh, you know, plan a little bit ahead of like, okay, this is what I'm going to try and talk about or what I'm going to try and get into in this session. Um, and, uh, and then go, go from there. Um, you don't have to flesh it out entirely, but I think taking those little, little bits and pieces, uh, is actually, um, uh, going, going to help. Uh, so hope, hope, I mean, hopefully that, that works for you again. It's hard. It's hard to know every, every party is different, but, um, but that's what I would do. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, Excuse me really quick. I need to check on the sick cat and make sure he hasn't taken off his cone. I'll be right back. All right, stop dancing. Uh, I do not know about session zero, although it sounds familiar. <laughs> um, yes, ice cream cat. Um, anybody want some ketchup? No? Okay. Just me, I guess. Um, yeah. So I did all that with, with this on. I can always go back to this. Hi. Um, so anyway, so my next steps for Horror on the Hill are um, to, to like sit down with it before bedtime, whatever, and, and go through, uh, just start reading it and uh, not make any notes. Just like if you were back in school and you're, you're reading whatever, To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, I th just think of that because Harper Lee just passed away. But anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, read it through and just read it through for enjoyment as much as possible. Like I said, they're, they can be kind of boring <laughs> to be read through. But stick with it. Read through it. And then go back and then start looking at making making some notes like maybe you want to change you don't want a hobgoblin orc army you want a kobold and dragon army or something like that um uh you can make subtle changes at that point um lift a game i think you might need to reread uh to kill a mockingbird i'm just i'm just thinking um Oh yeah, okay, that's very cool. Yeah, uh, session zero. Um, yeah, that sounds that sounds that sounds up my alley. Uh, I I assume you know about microscope. If you guys don't know about microscope, um, David and I were talking about it a little bit last week. Uh, but it's a it's a really cool role playing game where you basically um, 
you get together and you have a bunch of note cards and you essentially build a universe. You can you can build anything you can from a microcosm to literally a, a universe uh, as much as you want. Um, and uh, you zoom into different periods and stuff like that. But each player uh, adds something to that world. And um, it uh, it's a great world building uh, exercise. And uh, at some point I would love to run when I, after I do horror on the hill, uh, I would run a, um, uh, a microscope game and set up a universe, basically set up a world at least, uh, and then take that. And then you can focus in on one age or one, uh, uh, era of that, world of that universe and tell that story uh in a in anything you can take that and just take it and put it into a shadow run or a, a savage worlds or whatever you can go into any system and you now you have the world building done uh but all of the players are then invested in that history that you've all created and they all know how it ends and they all know how it begins but that specific little period in there is something that you can you can build uh, with them, and they all they all have that uh, shared knowledge. So it's 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 actually really really cool. Uh, Live the game, and I are going to have words after this stream. We're just actually we're just going to read To Kill a Mockingbird together. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, microscope, very cool. I will, I will touch on it. Um, I will touch on it in a later uh, episode, for sure. Um, uh, but yeah, anyway. Um, so session zero sounds very much like that, and I, I, I greatly uh, approve of having having the uh, the table basically get together and go. Okay, what what are we here for? Um, I know Mason and I like to try and do um, uh, shared uh, character building when we can. Um, uh, we just did it this weekend for a super secret project. Mason ran it. <laughs> Most people weren't able to make it, unfortunately, but uh, it is really handy uh, when you're creating a new party and everything like that to to have that um, uh, that shared experience. And it, I think it just it 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 amplifies. Uh, it's not necessary. Uh, lots of lots of uh, people can can game and enjoy the game without having to go into um, a crazy deep, you know, uh, mind bending world advancement uh, thing. Uh, so don't be afraid that <laughs> you know you have to do that for any game that you run or, or play in. Um, Again, it's 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 what you want to do, uh, and that's the important thing is that you're having fun. Um, oh, don't you threaten me with a book reading? Live the game. Um, I don't know. You can, I guess. Um, uh, anyway, so. Um, so my next steps with Horror on the Hill are to read the whole thing uh, cover to cover. And then I am going to start making notes. So my homework for this week, which is going to be crazy busy, uh, but I'm going to make some time because that's what you got to do. As a GM, you make time. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, G GTS is, is right. Uh 95% of all I have a problem in my game posts on forums or Reddit can be solved by communication. It's absolutely true. Um, uh, I, I've always had pretty good uh, experiences in games that I've played in, but we always, um, we are always talking. We're, we're always like, well, this is cool. The GM's always, Mason, still, he does so much for Barkies. And after every session, he's like, what worked, what didn't work? And we talk about it, um, and uh, it's it's a trait of great GMs uh, that they are still willing to work on uh, their uh, their gaming, and uh, same with players. Players should be open to that as well. Um, 
it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just sort of a, uh, it's a lost art communication. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think, um, I think that that's, it's a, it seems like a foregone conclusion, but it's actually so hard. I think, I think just being not getting too deep into it, but I think, uh, being a, a nerdy enterprise, uh, us nerds tend to have trouble with social interactions. Um, <laughs> uh, we're, I mean, we're having a nerd fight online right now with, uh, <laughs> reading books, but, um, uh, I, um, I think it's important that we try and step outside those boundaries, uh, and our comfort levels to some degree. Some guys aren't afraid to talk uh, and speak their mind. And sometimes, you know, they might should shut up, but what works for some people. Um, so anyway, yeah, I do recommend having that, having a communication, uh, train going on, uh, whether it's via email, set up a base camp, whatever you want to do. Um, and, uh, um, you know, have people clear as to, as to what, what's going on. Uh, but as the GM, you kind of set that goal, uh, as to what you want to be, uh, you know, how you want, kind of want people to run. Like, okay, I'm going to run a game. Like if you're the GM, a lot of people don't, uh, a lot of players anyway, if you've never GM'd before, um, you kind of have this feeling like the GM just basically picks up this book and just kind of can go with it and just run with it. I, a great GM can do that. I'm sure. Uh, it's all improvisation at that point, but, um, uh, congratulations, lift a game. Well done. Namaste. Um, uh, anyway, um, not all GMs can do that. And, and it takes a lot of work to, even take a pre-written module and, and make it something that your players are going to like and, 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 uh, get into. Um, and so, uh, when I'm playing, I, I like to try and, you know, I want people to know that the GM is the ultimate arbiter of, of everything, of, of where the story is going to go and all that stuff. Um, I don't like, I don't like, uh, fucking with my, um, GM story too much. Like I can tell when this is not what they planned. Um, and, and it, it, get, it can get hairy really fast, but, um, anyway, uh, yeah, I would say, um, uh, I would say just, just definitely have some communication and, uh, let, let the GM sort of take that, take control of, where the game is going to go and make sure that that's set in stone so that everyone understands that so that there's that there's no um there's no question as to well i wanted my character to become a paragon and you know whatever i wanted my prestige class to go here and it's like hey if this whole thing was about killing a certain dragon it's about killing a certain dragon like we can we can deal with the other stuff later but the gm is going to set that guidepost um <laughs> yeah um anyway uh so my goal is to read this through uh before the next session uh and then the next session uh i'm going to go through with questions that i have uh from the uh from the module as written by douglas niles and uh you can read along in your own horror on the hill uh <laughs> read along books um when you hear the kobold screech like this <laughs> screech screech he just screeched um uh yeah anyway um so i, I am sure that i'm going to have questions especially questions on how do i convert this to 5e uh what is you know what is a good alternative for this? I don't want my players to be running into that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, anyway, so I'm going to come on next Monday with a, uh, with a, with a question list. Um, and I want you guys as, as homework to come back with any questions that you have on your own modules. Uh, and we'll go from there. Um, uh, 
but yeah, I, I think, I think that, uh, we, we start getting that, that going where we have the, uh, we have the feedback, uh, and we're, we're able to help each other out. I think that's going to be really fun. Ah, so good. Um, uh, yeah. So, um, anyway, like I said, I am not reading this right now just to spare you guys. Um, but, uh, I'd love to hear about some of your, uh, and not just from Gamer's Tavern show, cause, cause I know you've got a bunch of stories and you have, you have stuff. And if you guys are not following Gamer's Tavern show on Twitch, uh, or his blog, uh, check it out, please. Um, let's see. Do I have your, do I have your thing handy here? Yar. Uh, yeah, check out check out uh, GTS's podcast and all that stuff. Bunch of great stuff. Um, lots of um. Yeah, there's tons of um. Um. um Am I ready for streams every night this week except for Thursday? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, this is super busy, but it's it's honestly, it's good. It's good practice because we're going to be getting crazy busy here in the next uh, in the next month, I think. So it's, uh, it, it's really going to be um, insane. So, yeah, I, I, hope, I hope people can tune in. I hope that we have something tomorrow. Uh, if you missed it, if you missed it earlier, Tyler's supposed to have Rhodes Legacy tomorrow. But since we are uh, setting up, uh, the um is like Will's hair fluffs. I shouldn't have an um counter, but it would go so high. Uh, you know, I, I could set it up so that if you wanted to count one of my ums, you had to donate a dollar. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we have to set up tomorrow for the stream on Wednesday, the super secret stream, which everyone should tune in and watch. Uh, and um, definitely try to check it out. Hopefully we'll have something streaming tomorrow. Uh, we're, we're thinking probably like a, a streamed uh, setup uh, of us putting things together. Uh, so, yeah. Check it out. So that's tomorrow. Wednesday, we have the super secret stream. Thursday, it's dead. Go tune into uh, Critical Role or something. And then Friday, uh, um, we have a uh, season finale of Barkey's Brigade. Super crazy. Super secret stream on Wednesday is at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and uh, likely going to midnight. Actually, I know it's going to midnight. So it's a longer stream. It starts a little bit earlier than our normal Barky st streams. But, um, yeah, super secret, 8 p.m. Wednesday, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, yeah, we'll see if I can get Moobot set up with an um count. I'll do what I can. Um, there you go. That's 516 ums. 517. So what else? Um, we've got uh, Friday is the season finale of Barkies. And then so, yeah, after that, uh, we are probably moving into a new space. I think I can say that much, at least. Uh, I think we found a new space. I'm super excited about it. Um, more details as as they unfold. But, uh, yeah, it's nothing else. New table, <laughs> which is going to be great. Uh, it's going to be giant. Uh, and new shows, I hope. Um, we, we'd love to do more shows. Uh, unfortunately, the number of shows we can do is sort of hampered by 
uh, the time and money it takes to put on new shows. So uh, if you want to for sure see new shows and see a lot of different shows, check out our Patreon. It helps out a lot. Um, uh, otherwise, yeah, um, we will be doing a lot more stuff. How to's, uh, lots of how to Q and A's. We're going to be doing, um, uh, more RPG streams. Uh, David Crennan will be coming in and running some games for us. Uh, Sean, uh, everyone's favorite, uh, paladin, Donovan Belter, um, Sean will probably be running some games for us. He, he ran a 13th age game for us during, um, during, uh, the, uh, Alzheimer's event last year. Um, and, uh, uh yeah, uh, I, I'm hoping that a lot of our, uh, yeah, the cat cones, uh, by the way, cat cones do not come cheap. Well, the cat cone was cheap. It was what necessitated the cat cone that doesn't come cheap. Um, but that's not what our Patreon is for. Uh, our page, all the Patreon money goes directly into saving throw, uh, is what you see here. Um, but thank you for thinking, uh, of my cat. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can host, I can host. Here's the thing about hosting. Uh, and this is me getting on a soapbox here, but uh, here's the thing about hosting on Twitch. Hosting uh, is is a is a tricky animal. Um, uh, the host, only the person who's getting hosted, benefits from the hosting. Um, and uh, I and I think it's great, and I think I think that it's useful and it's worthwhile. I hosted an encounter role play this weekend. Um, uh, good shows should get hosted. And, uh, I think a lot of it is, is, is like, I'm at work when you start streaming gamers Tavern show. And this isn't to say that I would not host you cause you're awesome. Um, but, uh, um, I'm at work and so it's hard for me to get onto Twitch and enact the host mechanism. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I wish that Twitch would, would create, uh, something so that, uh, if you're hosting a stream, you would get uh, credit for those viewers because the way that Twitch works with their, their partner streams, are they watching right now? Can I talk about this? Um, so we're not a partner stream, as you can tell. Uh, and uh, nor, I don't know, I don't even know if we really want to be a partner stream. Um, uh, it, it would help us in terms of um, bandwidth and stuff. It would help you guys watching us. So on that alone, I would love to be a partner stream. Um, but, uh, they, they have really kind of funky rules as to how you can become a partner. Uh, uh, the, the long and short of it is you have to have a, uh, a regular streaming schedule and theoretically a hundred or more concurrent viewers per session. Uh, right now, I think on Twitch, we're hitting around 17. So, which is great. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. No, literally like that's, that is, I am, that is amazing. Um, and then however many people are watching us on YouTube and, uh, no, no, that's not why we're not a partner stream. <laughs> uh, we only just started, uh, streaming to YouTube. Uh, we're going to stream to YouTube until we become a partner on Twitch. Um, uh, no, we, we applied to be a partner stream a while ago um, and uh, were turned down uh, because we weren't streaming enough and we didn't have high enough viewer counts. So uh, that was the, that was the that was sort of the the, uh, the thing. But honestly, it's it's uh, it's a little bit more convoluted than that. Um, but anyway, when you host, you don't get the you don't get credit for the viewers that you are bringing into the the hosted stream so if someone is uh um so if i host one of you guys um and i bring and 15 people come to my channel to watch your stream i don't get i don't get those 15 people as credit uh on my stream they they are 15 people onto your stream which is great for you 
but it doesn't help us meet the numbers that we try to meet to become a partner. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a little, it's a little funky and like, I don't know. I hate looking at it that way. Um, because honestly I'm happy with whoever is watching right now. Um, because you know, it's D and D on a, on a video game channel, <laughs> like Twitch is, Twitch is pretty, pretty much, uh, about the video game. So I love, I love being that outsider that's, that's talking about D and D on here. And there are so many other channels that do it. Um, uh, no, no, no. I, oh, hosting is more beneficial than I think. That's what you mean to say. Yes. Uh, I, I have looked into hosting, uh, or I mean, I've, I've hosted, I know. Yeah. What? It, okay. Okay. You guys tell me what is the problem with my hosting philosophy? Cause I, I do, I, I, I'm happy to change. Uh, and I, and as I demonstrated this weekend, I, I do host other people's streams. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Explain to me what I'm missing, um, from, from that. Because I would love to know. And while you think about that, I have to go check on the cat again. Okay. Uh, the easy answer is you are not streaming anyway, so it doesn't hurt you. Of course. Right. Absolutely. I agree with that. You can get viewers from the people you host. There is usually a bounce back. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. Revelbot does need that. Um, the bounce back. Okay. Um, I don't know if uh, if there's a way to quantify that. I am not sure. Uh, that's sort of where it gets into a hazy, uh, a hazy thing of analytics that I that I try not to get into too much. Um, uh, yeah, if there's a quantifiable bounce back, that's something for sure. Absolutely, and I I, I can see that. Uh, let's see. Uh, I go to Saving Throw Show at, n at 9 p.m. Central Time and see a Shadowrun game hosted by Gamers Tavern Show. I've got something to entertain myself with until 10 p.m. when uh, Barky's Brigade starts. Um, yes. That is what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that. absolutely. Uh, I mean, we, we've actually talk, talked a lot about it, and, and hosting is actually... Uh, going to be coming into play this week uh, quite a bit um, uh, but that's 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 exactly it uh, it's 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 providing content for people who are going to be watching um, uh, it's and and that's great and as you say it's it's promoting friends and that's also great uh, I'm all I'm saying it's uh, none of those are bad reasons uh, none of those are reasons not to host uh, but, um, uh, the, I, well, I'm just saying what it, what it means for the, for the person to, who is, uh, hosting the stream is in, in terms of Twitch anyway, is very little. It's, it's, uh, there is no, uh, that, that I know of, there's no real super quantifiable, uh, um, uh, uh, as Lift Again says, bounce back of viewers that that I that I have been able to perceive. Uh, that there may be some one or two people maybe coming back and following us, uh, but I haven't seen a, a ton. Um, but I don't know. That might that might be just me not looking at the right things or something like that. But yeah. Um, 
Oh, Tyler's on. Oh, thank God. Um. Yeah, I mean it's it's like any it's like any uh, channel on TV. Uh, you want to have a lead in, and you want to have a, uh, um, uh, you know, you want to have those those things so that when people tune in, they're like, oh, I'll stick around and watch. Um, and I think it's I think it's great. I I do think that's a that's a really good aspect of it. And I think that hosting is very cool. I'm just saying in terms of how Twitch works, host hosting. Hosting is is great for friends to host other friends and stuff, uh, b uh, but it, in terms of a getting anything back from Twitch in that, like Twitch doesn't look at hosting. I can host everyone 24 hours a day, and Twitch is not going to go, oh, hey, he's a good guy for hosting all those people. Does that make sense? Like, I feel good about it, but Twitch isn't necessarily doing it, and so, uh, yeah, that's that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that I hate hosting or anything like that. Uh, or that people aren't worth hosting over, uh, just that that's how the Twitch thing works. So that's 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 what I'm trying to get at, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I I mean I'm 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 interested to hear. I I don't know. I've I've read a lot about uh, other people who have hosted and stuff like that. Like, I I absolutely think it's a good. Um, a good tool and I think that it's it's worth exploring but yeah it's I don't know it's it's a very it's a it's very weird uh weird thing I ha I'm, I haven't quite wrapped my mind around it <laughs> yeah it can be mutually beneficial I agree with that absolutely absolutely um it, it helps when when the other channel is is uh, streaming at a time I'm not at work so that I can actually click the buttons to make the host host thing work yeah absolutely I think mutual 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 agreements are 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 key to making a making a hosting uh, thing work for both parties um, yeah I, I yeah I can see that uh, no direct advantage, but there is indirect advantages and no disadvantages. Um, yeah, uh, I think the only disadvantage would, again, be I can't access Twitch uh, while I'm at work. So if you want to get hosted while I'm at work, like you have, you know, it has to wait until I'm out of work. And then that's why I stream as late as I stream, because I don't get out of work till then. So that's that's that's, you know, that's part of the problem is uh is hosting people who have streams earlier in the day is a little bit harder for me uh, to get to work around work, as it were. Um, yeah, I would love to have a job where I can access Twitch more. That would be great. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be really rude right now, and I have to text someone because the actual owner of the cat that I um, am watching right now. Uh, I have to let them know that the cat is asleep on the couch. But, yes, continue. I am playing Powerball. Uh, Um, yes. Okay. Um, yes. Twitch app for my phone. Yes. Um, my, <laughs> my job is, is not, is not super, uh, super easy for me to, I'll, I'll just say that my job's not super easy for me to hop off and, uh, I know it's super, it's really easy to jump on and, and type slash host and the uh, the channel it is really easy to do that and really fast but um uh that's 
that's uh that's 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 where i'm at with that <laughs> so uh it's not that i i want to avoid uh twitch during the day because i have a lot of stuff i could be doing on twitch but a uh, job comes first because it pays for the stuff that is doing all of this um yes no, I am not a I am not a secret agent. <laughs> um anyway, sorry. I I know that that the uh yeah, that's a little funky. I hope I hope you understand where I'm where I'm coming from. I think you guys do, uh, and I appreciate your opinions. That's that's absolutely. You guys aren't wrong. Um, uh, no, no, no. Uh, and I I wanted this on stream because I I think I think it's great. It's 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 cool because uh, you know one of the things that I'm doing at Gen Con is I'm doing a um, how to get your games or your RPGs or whatever onto a Twitch or a YouTube. And so this is this is great. Uh, for people who want to do this more, I think it's really good to be open about how we do it. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm very committed to being open in that regard and, and happy to change uh, aspects of how I uh, operate saving throw uh, and, and all of that stuff. And, and you, you guys are right. Um, it, it is mutual. It can be mutually beneficial. Um, and uh, I, I think it's good. Uh, when, you know, it's, it's, it's determining who, who you're streaming with and who you want to host and, and all that stuff. So there, yeah, there's lots of stuff that, that gets involved in it. I just wish that Twitch had a better, um, had a better method of, uh, portioning out those views. I, that's really my bottom line is, is hosting. I think hosting could be a really great, uh, for everyone, if if Twitch counted those views either for both channels equally, uh, or split them or something, so that so that there was a there was a already not just in a in a good you know uh, back and forth between two channels, but just just in a way like hey you're getting these views and I'm also getting these views, so it's 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 a win win situation all the way around. Uh, I would love if Twitch was able to somehow enact that so that so that everyone could get those uh those views but um that's not it yet so hopefully sometime soon they'll be able to do that but in the meantime uh it is great it is great to host other people's stuff so that i, I will make that clear <laughs> um anyway now that now that uh uh yeah I, and I may be going to TwitchCon this year, um, uh, if if I can swing it, um, and uh, we'll be we'll be hopefully talking more about that there. I I'm going to be talking to the Twitch guys about uh, about role playing games on Twitch. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. What else? Who's going to Gen Con? Are you guys going to Gen Con? Uh, I am. Uh, a lot of the Barky's team is going to Gen Con, um, so it's going to be a very exciting time. And uh, yeah, I hope that you guys can come and 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 come out. I love I love uh, some of you guys who are on Twitch a lot, uh, live the game, Gamers Tavern show and stuff to come out and um, so that we can have a little uh, meet up. Uh, would be great uh, and we can talk about these things uh, yes of course castles and chemo um, oh by the way uh, Tyler is an FBI agent got to put the boy to bed uh, just means he's got to go back out to the truck and give coffee to the uh, other agents that are out there <sighs> um, you're as far away from Gen Con as I am live the game just a different angle um <laughs> uh 
yeah yeah uh, housing housing sucks uh pax prime maybe we'll see <laughs> yeah i mean honest like convention convention going with with these uh um like there are so many awesome conventions out there um and, and there are so many that i would love to go to um and but it's it's just like you know some of it's finding finding the the time and the money to go to that many uh, i don't know um cookie sales went pretty well um i i don't know how much i helped with that but <laughs> if you guys bought cookies thank you so much uh, my niece was like super excited about all that stuff. Um, and she was, she was really sad going into it cause her friends had sold out of that, like sold like 80 boxes or something like that. And she had only sold like six. And then like after the weekend and everything like that, she was like up to 50 or something. So she was really excited. Um, so yeah, if you did buy cookies from my niece, thanks. <laughs> yes, Kyle, getting back on topic. Um, uh, doing a campaign with a war theme. Um, like specifically how, like what, like, like an actual war, like a world war two or like a Crimean war or uh war of the roses or something like that. Or like just, just two factions warring together and the party is in there. Like, yeah. Describe your war. Uh, I, I mean, I've, I've been in, I've played in games where, We've had things that that massive uh, Star Wars one uh, that Mason put together uh, five teams. Um, so uh, five teams of five people each uh, with a GM at each table. And everyone was playing a uh, sort of specific group that was meant to do uh, one specific thing in this battle. They were trying to take over, stop this world devastator from destroying this planet and also removing the imperial presence from from the planet so it was sort of a war kind of thing uh but uh yeah i i mean i think there are a bunch of different ways to play it uh for sure depending on what the war is and how you want to interact with it but i think it can be really fun um yeah i mean certainly that's how we all got started or that's how D D got started anyway but um yeah yeah, you can use yeah special agents absolutely yeah um, and, and like I said it it depends on if you want the the players to be like how high are they in this you know how do you want the battle to be working uh, are, are you focused on a general on an overall scale with a war like they're they're fighting the battles or is it personal like they're they're going uh, on the front lines and it's, you know, one by one soldier to soldier. Um, yeah. Yeah. The dirty dozen aspect is a great, it's a classic. Um, always, always good. Mason has some ideas on that. I know. Um, we might see those later on um yep some good good comments from uh gts aka the abstruse one um yeah i think i uh okay rat folk and drow coming up from the underdark and the party has a choice of joining or resist their rule um Yeah, I mean that's that's a pretty classic uh, storyline. Um, I think I think you can you know uh, it's 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 a matter of determining the the scope of how you want your players to be um, involved in this. Are they uh, uh, are they on the front lines? Are they are they the key to bringing this warring? group into the city or whatever are they are they the only the last bastion or the only stop uh the only people able to stop this this group from waging war on on someone uh things like that um or are they 
are they like uh abstruse one is talking about bsv care are they like a a a tight group that can go in and affect little things as they go um and and sort of take out various aspects of of everything um uh yeah i think i think it can work either way honestly it just depends on which which direction your party wants to go and how how they want to play and what their characters are hey cord what's up man mythmatic it's late what are you doing on um uh yeah um Uh, let's see. Monday night gaming. Hey, welcome. Uh, question. I love making custom magic items, uh, items with really interesting combinations of elements or uh, elements that aren't in the book at all. What is one, some of your favorite custom made items? Um, uh, I, uh, I, I, I can't say I've made too many magic items, but when I was a kid, uh, first playing D and D, uh, we did have a, a, a wand of force, uh, which we used as a basically a lightsaber, um, and and that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that's really <laughs> that's really the extent of my magic magic item creations. But um, yeah, what about you guys? What sort of magic items have you have you created? What sort of materials did you use in your game? castles that's great no twelve thirty is not that late i agree um yeah i you know the i i don't recall if the uh current um if the current DMG uh, has a uh, has anything for um, for building a magic item, I'm sure it does. But if it, if I don't I don't remember if it has like uh, like these are elements that you can use to build something. That's that's a good question. Because you can really like you can make make it up like whatever the hell you want, right? Um, crafting yeah yeah I mean there's specifics on building but they, they don't really uh... they don't really uh, talk too much about it um, ghost of Christmas future no that's that's not too late you're still okay uh, Artie Bram gave a barbarian a plus one bastard sword that grows another plus one for every consecutive hit. Holy crap, but its critical fail also grows with it. With a round of not getting any hits, it goes back to plus one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That might be game. It depends on the rolls, right? That might be game breaking. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's the most simple uh, magic items that tend to be the best uh, yes a few custom items including a new artifact uh, in the game that I played with myth this weekend uh, which he's still recovering from um, uh, we we got magic items right uh and uh i got what was it it was the well of the well of e eternal worlds or something like that uh what was it let me see if i can find it um no it wasn't there in fact well of many worlds uh yeah Oh, did I uh, on the at Gen Con? Did I actually did I actually run into that? Yes, it was the Well of Many Worlds. Um, 
Yes, if we're if yeah, uh, if we are calling back to uh, to Barkies, yes, there's a kitty collar of cat holding. Um, there is Sean's sword schlumpf. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's some great magic items in there. Um, well, see, I had the Well of Many Worlds opens a portal uh, to another dimension. And so, which I didn't know until I, I looked it up when I got it. And so my whole thing was I was going to roll it out in front of me and then have the goblins just come towards, you know, just running towards me. And it was like going to be like this great, like Wally e. Coyote thing where they're just going to run into the well and then fall down. It never happened. But that's okay. It's a great idea, though. Um,. Uh, you know, Udo's Lanthorn of Nidox is probably the most powerful magic item that we've dealt with, uh, in a Barky's game. Um, uh, and we don't know the full, uh, the full nature of it quite yet, but, um, yes. Or if, if poor Udo is out of that, uh, uh, out of that lanthorn you'll have to find out this week the season finale on friday uh to find out if he gets out of that lanthorn in time um oh yeah myth uh you guys are always great to play with uh i love having you guys around um and being able i love that you guys asked me to play so i had a lot of fun Oh, that's cool, Quintus. I love that. Cloak of the Raven. That's very cool. Uh, so anyway, I'm, uh, I, I, I have to wrap this up a little bit early. I usually try and go to 10, uh, but because of the cat and everything, I have to wrap this up a little bit early. Uh, so recap. Um, my homework this week is to read Horror on the Hill. I'm going to read this and I'm going to come back with questions for you guys. You guys are going to go out and read your own modules uh, or your own campaigns that you've created or whatever. And if you have questions, we're all going to sit around and, and, and talk about them and answer them next week, Monday at 8 o'clock on the next proficiency check. Um, also, uh, tomorrow, 11 o'clock in the morning, stay tuned for a very special announcement. Uh, and, um, and then tomorrow night... Uh, that's all I can say about that. And then tomorrow night, uh, Tyler and I will hopefully be streaming something, uh, at some point, uh, as we set up for the special game on Wednesday, Wednesday at 11 AM, another special announcement, super secret special announcement. And then Wednesday night, the, uh, sort of penultimate thing that happens, uh, um, because of those announcements. Um, <laughs> hey, you don't have to answer those questions. I was answering those questions. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, and then uh, Thursday night, it's a day off. Uh, watch Critical Role uh, or something. And then uh, Friday, uh, we have the season finale of Barky's Brigade. Season 2 ends. Uh, will the players make it? Will they shut down that portal? What else the hell are they doing? I don't know. Mace, are you still on? Uh, you tell us uh, what they're doing. Um, but yeah, so very busy week, very exciting, and lots of news coming. Uh, so the next two days, some some cool things are happening, and then we have a lot more news happening after that. Uh, so anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, um, yeah, you guys are the best, and uh, we'll see you here next week, 8 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time for another proficiency check where we're going to talk more about uh, becoming a GM, and uh, yeah, it should be fun. So anyway, thanks very much, you guys. Uh, signing off now. I will see you soon. Um, these will be uh, – uh, oh, yes, the announcements will be on Twitter. They'll be on Facebook. Uh and uh, you might see something on YouTube on Wednesday. You might see something on YouTube on Wednesday. Um, 
but yeah so uh we will we will see you guys then but anyway thank you for tuning in good night all sleep tight uh and i don't have like a witty like keep rolling crits or something like i don't have one of those things so just have fun all right <laughs>